What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Pest Control Internet Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Patel, CEO of K3 Marketing, a Google premier partner where we have been perfecting the art of pest control internet marketing since 2005. All right. As always, I hope everyone's doing well, everyone's staying safe. I have recently seen a huge uptake in people, you guys sending questions, asking questions, you know, about Google ads and marketing pest control, uh, marketing your pest control company, as well as, you know, asking questions about my services and things like that. That's great. I'm loving the engagement. So please keep them coming. It's been it's been a lot of fun so far. All right, let us jump right in because the conversation we're going to have today is not a great one. If you currently run Google Ads, then you may have recently seen a notification. I think Google started coming out coming out with it about a week and a half or so ago. I'm going to read it right here. It was a notification. It says changes to the search terms report. So that's the title of the notification changes to the search terms report. And here's what the notification says. We are updating the search terms report to only include terms that were searched by a significant number of users. As a result, you may see fewer terms in your report going forward. Okay. So I don't think we've talked in depth about what search terms are. I believe we touched on them uh, briefly during, I think it was episode two or three. I think it was episode three when we talked about negative keywords, All right? So first, let's just kind of retouch on what search terms are. So if you remember, in Google Ads, you have to specify your keywords with different keyword match types, such as broad match, modify, exact, you know, phrase match, things like that. Search terms are essentially the actual terms, the actual search keywords that the user typed in. So for example, if your keyword is broad match modify plus pest plus control company near me, then Google may find a variance of that and still show you up for, you know, companies in 30019 that offer pest control services. Even though that's not your keyword, it's a search term that's related to your keyword. So that search term is the actual term that the user, your potential customer, typed into the search engine. And it's important for you to know that information because you want to know exactly what you're paying for. Okay, so now Google is basically saying that, hey, for the keywords that are the search terms that are, you know, just like one click or so, we're just not going to show you that. Now, as a Google Ads manager, as a Google Ads professional, as a Google Ads expert, this is terrible, terrible news. Extremely, extremely bad news. Why? Uh, let me explain. So I think many of you who've been following me since the beginning know that a lot of my research and analysis and case studies are being um, done with my client here in Atlanta, Peachtree Pest Control. So I ran a little report. Let me pull it up here. So I l basically looked at my search campaigns, so all the campaigns that I have in my search campaigns, all the keywords that I have. And I looked at the first two weeks of data in August. So August 1st through August 14th. Okay. And turned out that they had 1,492, so 1,492 clicks, all right? And the number of search terms that I was able to view was 1,527. Now, you may be thinking, how do you have more search terms and clicks? Shouldn't it be the same number? Well, it was, it was great before because actually, especially in the pest control space, Google showed you a lot of search terms that weren't clicked on or maybe were clicked on and then you got credit for, they realized it was invalid click or not relevant in the, you know, after the fact. But essentially, it was great because you could see all the search terms that were clicked on 
one search terms that had just one click and even some search terms that had, you know, five or six impressions, but no clicks, but still, you know, your ad got served during that. And this is great info because the more search term info you have, the better, because one, you know exactly what you're paying for. And two, it really helps you build a solid negative keyword list. Okay. And that's really the key, right? You want to know what you're paying for, how much you're paying for what. And then you want to make sure that you're not wasting money on bad clicks. And that's really what a search term report is. So Google made the, I got the notification, I believe, like the second or the third of September. So I ran the same report in September, the first 14 days. So September 1st through September 14th. And they got a few less clicks. So they got 1,351 clicks, okay? So about 100 and, what was that, 140 or so clicks less um, so far this month. But look at this. They only displayed 1,174 search terms. So that basically means there are almost 200 search terms that my client, Peachtree Pest Control, paid for, clicked on, but we have no idea what they are. And this is, this sucks. This really does suck. Especially if you're starting off in Google ads and you don't have a solid negative keyword list, then you could be wasting money. You know, Google said, you know, out of, let's say, let's just use a, a, an easier an example. Let's just say you had a hundred clicks and Google only shows you about, you know, 60 of them. Then what about those other 40 clicks? Yeah, it was only one click, but I want to know what they are. I want to make sure I'm not wasting money on those clicks again. All right. So if you are currently running Google ads, make sure you take the necessary steps on, you know, building a negative keyword list. And let's let's go a little bit into that. But before we do, I want to kind of throw in one other, you know, I guess, major issue that's been around for a little while, but kind of relates to this, is Google's close variance. So in the keyword match types episode that we had, we talked about, hey, exact match is, you know, the brackets. And if I say pest control company, that's all I want. But Google actually has loosened, laxed up on the close variance. It's, it's actually been a couple of years now, I believe. So it's not really related. You know, they're, they're very lax on what they show, even on the, on the exact match keywords. So, so, you know, you say, you may think, all right, I'll just add a bunch of exact match and not really have to worry too much about a negative keyword list. But Google will still show you um, that. So it's honestly, it kind of feels like people are being forced to go into a smart campaign, which I think is what's happening because you know, Google was really, really pushing automation. But, you know, as long as you, you see an ROI, obviously, you know, you should be happy. But truthfully, you're probably wasting a lot of clicks if you don't have this type of control. So what can you do? I think the biggest thing here is to focus on your negative keyword list. You know, be a little bit more proactive there. Luckily for us in our agency, we have a huge negative keyword list and we're pretty much set, at least in this space. But if you're starting off or you've just recently started off, you may, you know, have to have to have to really overcome this. So first of all, let's let's think of some ideas. So let's say you just started a Google Ads campaign and you you've entered your, your keywords and you want to build a negative keyword list. And you look through your search terms, you had a hundred clicks and you look through your 60 search terms and you added some negative keyword list, but you know, you know, negative keywords, but you know that 40 keywords or search terms, you know, weren't displayed. So what you could possibly do is kind of put yourself in the mindset of a potential customer as well as a DIYer or, you know, even like 
a kid searching for some pictures for their school project, you know, and try to think of, of words that may come up, you know, go pick up Google and just kind of search around, do a little bit of research, like, you know, I'd, I would never show up for this word. I would never show up for, you know, certification or, you know, um, DIY or, or whatever. So kind of just be one, try to get one step ahead of the game in that sense. That's one thing you could do. Another one is to insert synonyms of that word. So let's say you build a neg uh, negative keyword list, open up the, the thesaurus and search for all synonyms for that word. That's something that we actually do on a regular basis, but it's, it's, a, great, it's a great way to kind of you know, limit the negative keywords or the, the, the bad search terms coming in. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it. It's it's actually pretty 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 awful news, especially for us Google Ads experts and for you guys. If you are running Google Ads, you know you want to make sure that your money is optimal, that you're only paying paying for the clicks that are relevant to you. And Google's really starting to take that away, and that's that's really unfortunate. So. But I think, um, you know, if we continue to build this negative keyword list, continue to see a ROI, make sure we still focus on ads, conversion, landing pages, and things like that, I think everything will still be fine. All right, that's it. Like I said before, uh, ask me a question. You can go to PCIMpodcast.com, fill out the form, go ahead and ask me any questions that you guys have. Again, I am Andy Patel with PCIM Podcast, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.